Dado, there's still like two and a half months before Witch Queen. Do we really need to start preparing now? Isn't it a bit early to be preparing for Witch Queen? No! No, it's not! Well, okay, for most of you, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably early. But for others, you know, maybe not. Some people want to start farming some stuff. I don't know what you want to do. So, how should you be preparing for Witch Queen? Alright, things are a little different compared to last year. We have four seasons worth of stuff going away. We have triumphs going away. Potentially a lot of guns going away or being inaccessible for an unknown amount of time. We don't really know a lot right now, but, you know, better to be overprepared than under. So the first thing is triumphs. Season 12 through season 15 triumphs are going away when the season ends. The titles for all of those seasons will also no longer be earnable. That's Warden, Chosen, Splicer, and Realm Walker. Splintered is Beyond Light. That is not going away as far as I'm aware. Basically, go into your Triumphs tab and everything in Season of the Hunt, Chosen, Splicer, and Lost are being retired. According to Bray.tech, there are 289 expiring Triumphs. Bray.tech has compiled a list of every single Triumph that is going away, laid out very nicely for you to scroll through and see what you're still needing to do. You can also filter out the ones you've already done, so you can focus on what is remaining. For example, I am missing 18 Triumphs that are expiring, ranging from Do the Proving Grounds Nightfall Without Dying to Focus Umbral Engrams. Notable Triumphs with Season of the Hunt are not really any of them. Maybe Harbinger-based Triumphs if you want those. I never bothered to go solo Harbinger, so I'll probably go do that soon. I really forget what triumphs give what in terms of rewards. So, you know, you can hover over stuff and see what gives cool things. That's pretty simple. I believe in you. You found this channel. You probably learned something by now, right? I believe in you. Just hover over some things and see what you want to go get. <laughs> Notables in Season of the Chosen are going to be presage-based triumphs, like finding all of the pages for Bound in Memory. Note that to get all 12 pages for this triumph, you need to start right now. If you're watching this video within the first couple of days it's come out, before the reset, get in a presage run right now if you've never done it before. If you have, then you should be okay. And for all of the pages you have already, that is one less week that you need to do it. But start now if you want that triumph. I don't remember if there are title implications for it. Notables in Season of the Splicer are not really anything to just just kind of doing a lot of override and expunges you know, expunge in less than 10 minutes expunge solo without dying i think maybe might be there or not i don't remember etc etc notables in season of the lost getting all the collectibles in each of the shattered realms and then you know kind of same chores as usual if you don't care about those triumphs at all or the titles within then you don't really need to worry about any of this at all. Just keep in mind that once they are gone, they're gone. Titles-wise kind of ties in with Triumphs. Most titles require a lot of busy work. Kill X amount of things, do activity Y amount of times, wear all the armor and kill X amount of things, and do activity Y amount of times. But most of the time gates should be gone, barring any sort of thing that requires a weekly reset, of which I don't think there are many besides something like the Presage lore pages. Well, nothing to the degree of the pages. Most other things might take two or three weeks to complete because of rotating bosses or stuff like Shattered Realm, where you need to be in three different areas that reset weekly. Next, Season 12, 13, 14, and 15 weapons. Start making it a habit to go to the helm and dump your umbrals into current and past season weapons using Parallax Trajectory. Use your season 13 and 14 materials if you really want to hunt for something specific, but season 15 engrams that give you season 12, 13, and 14 guns are probably going to be your best bet since Parallax Trajectory is not very hard to come by, but something like Hammer Charges from season 13 are. Well, harder to come by. Battlegrounds aren't exactly GM Nightfalls. What guns should I be looking for, Datto? I'm so glad you asked! The following guns come from the Season 12, 13, 14, 15 Umbral Engrams from the Season of the Lost Vendor subscreen. Season 12, Friction Fire SMG, Blast P2 Grenade Launcher, and Deafening Whisper Grenade Launcher. A good Friction Fire roll would be Subsistence and Rampage. 
Blast, you might want to look for Spike Grenades, Clown Cartridge, and uh, Chain Reaction's fun. Auto-loading is always good, but maybe not with Clown Cartridge. Deafening Whisper, the hot roll was Ambitious Assassin and Rampage. And that's basically it. But, you know, it's a good one for whenever it's not a dumb idea to use anything other than a fusion rifle. Season 13, Extraordinary Rendition SMG, Threaded Needle Linear Fusion, and Far Future Sniper. Rendition is a great SMG. Tons of good roles to look out for there. Subsistence, Overflow, Outlaw, Zen in the first column, Multi-Kill Clip, Rampage, Frenzy, One for All in the second. This is a great SMG to hunt for some good roles on. Threaded Needle, you probably want Auto-Loading Vorpal or Field Prep Vorpal, even with the nerf to Vorpal. Although maybe Frenzy gets some bonus points now. Far Future, I'm not as wild about. Maybe auto-loading demo for PvE, opening shot PvP. I'm not crazy about this gun. I haven't really seen it used a whole lot in PvE. Season 14, Chroma Rush is a great auto-rifle. A lot of people looking to get Subsistence Rampage. I think that's one of the best, if not the best, PvE role to go get. Adrenaline Junkie will likely be a viable option as well now. Ignition Code, if you're a fan of blinding grenades, I would look for that with, like, Field Prep or even Slide Shot and Danger Zone to be able to spam blinding grenades everywhere. Sojourner's Tail is a slug shotgun. If you don't have a good first in, last out, then I'm... Potentially looking to replicate that, so I'm going to go for Assault Mag, Auto Loading, and probably Frenzy or Adrenaline Junkie since there's no Vorpal here. Stack Range for a PvP roll and grab Opening Shot as well. Season 15, not going to lie, uh, nothing really pops out at me too hard for Season 15, much like the video I did for all of the Season 15 weapons. Feel free to check that one out for my recommendations. But there are a ton of weapons from other sources to go hunt down. You have the Prophecy weapons to go farm if you want those. You got World Drops to look for, Trials guns. You got the Nightfall weapons to farm. There are so many guns to track down. Servant Leader Scout from Gambit, Hothead Rocket, Uzume Sniper from Nightfall, Hothead is also from the Nightfall, Messengers, Pulse from Trials, Igneous Hammer from Trials, Palindrome from Nightfalls. Chances are you know what you're looking for. So keep working on it. I'm still looking for an auto-loading Vorpal threaded needle, and I don't even know if it'll be good next season. World drops, I don't even know where to start. Scathelock, Gnawing Hunger, Main Ingredient, Annual Skate, Legal Action, Cold Denial, Night Watch, First In, Last Out, Truth Teller, Falling Guillotine. Those are all great weapons that you should be looking out for. I have no idea what weapons will be rotating out, if any, from basically any source. This is just a big list of, here's what's good, go get it, just in case. Speaking of guns, more of them. Hawk Moon and Dead Man's Tail. Make sure you find the roles you want, and for God's sake, try to get the catalyst for both weapons while you can. Reminder that certain catalysts that Bungie said that they were going to bring back to the game are still not in the game many months later. I'm sure they have a better game plan for these, and Bungie is finally bringing back those old catalysts, but just do yourself a favor and try to get them done right now, right? Like, why bother waiting? They're also really good catalysts. Also, if you're really looking for stuff to do while you're in-game, grind catalysts for guns that you do have. You know, might as well, right? Wish Ender has some stuff on the Tangled Shore that you need to do, specifically, you know, the opening mission. Make sure you go do that if you don't have Wish Ender, which requires Forsaken. The next couple of things are sort of also Triumph and Cosmetic based, but Tangled Shore based things are all going away as the Tangled Shore is getting thrown into the Destiny content vault. Anything that has to do with the Tangled Shore, anything, if you want it, you better go get it. Spider Bounty Emblem Ship Sparrow. Been seeing a lot of people talk about these. How do you get those? Wing of the Crow is an emblem. Comes from the non-wanted bounties from the spider. Apparently this is a very, very rare emblem. Very low drop chance. So might as well get started now. The other two items, the ship and the sparrow, are a random drop from the wanted bounties. Do they really matter at all? Not really but they're just going away. So if you care about that, go get it. The Empty Tank Lost Sector Solo and Solo Flawless on Master. Get that done for some Triumph score. Really, you should just try to go do all of the 
Lost Sectors for Triumph Score while you're at it. Next up is pretty simple. Materials. Gather as many materials as possible. Planetary materials, legendary shards, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards. Stack them on your characters, stack them in your postmaster. Planetary mats, keep buying as much as possible. I know it's annoying and hopefully it'll be a bit easier in Witch Queen, but just keep stacking materials as much as you can. Spend your etheric spiral because that is the Tangled Shore material, which will likely be retired because Tangled Shore is getting vaulted. I imagine they'll only be able to be turned in for Glimmer like the other materials when those materials were retired. Seasonal challenges. If you care about having Bright Dust, get 75 of those things done. There's a total of 77. You will have to play some Gambit. I know, but that is a lot of Bright Dust if you are willing to play. Make sure you also collect everything from the Season 15 Season Pass, and if you haven't already, log into Bungie.net and go to the Season 14 Season Pass and grab everything out of there too if you didn't do that last season. Next is just general inventory management. Clean out your vaults. If you haven't watched me roast Fallout's vault for being 500 out of 500 with every item slot on every one of his characters filled up, go watch, get inspired, clean your vaults, make armor sets, clean out that old garbage. Bungie just said in a recent TWAB that mods are going to be free to slot now, no glimmer costs, which means you're probably going to be able to make loadouts on stuff like Destiny Item Manager. Make those armor sets. Clear your vault. You will be much less stressed out. I promise you. What I believe to be finally, sadly, is saving bounties. Now, Bungie has not said anything about bounties carrying over to Season 16 in terms of weeklies or dailies. Obviously, any bounties from Season 12, 13, 14, 15 are going to be removed when Witch Queen launches, or at least that is my assumption. But otherwise, until Bungie says anything about saving bounties, then they are still fair game. You're going to want to stock up on weekly bounties and then daily bounties while trying to avoid the repeatable ones as much as possible unless you have everything else done and you can sit on them. What is the point of saving bounties if the raid tends to be contest mode capped and capped in such a way that it is not difficult to hit that cap? Well, it's simply to get more seasonal artifact mod slots faster at the beginning of the season to better ensure that you will reach those final mods as fast as possible in case they're really good. That's really about it. I imagine it'll be quite possible to get enough experience to unlock those mods before the raid launches if you don't save any bounties, but it's there if you want it. That being said, this does get a bit more value than usual since we're going into a new expansion as opposed to a new season, and seasons don't tend to matter as much with leveling compared to an expansion. If you have anything that you would like to recommend, drop it in the comments, but I think that should cover most things for most people. This is probably extreme overkill for 99% of you. I think the average player could do almost nothing and be fine. But, you know, you made it to the end of the video, so I guess, you know, you found this valuable, so that's cool. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.